Now I promised you guys I was gonna do more affordable type of videos. And this isn't a review, but more of less kind of like a flashback in. I'm asking myself, especially when I'm talking about with all the new Intel stuff and all the new Ryzen stuff, that's fine for people who have pretty big budgets. But what about people that don't have a lot of spend? Well, guess what? The entry level market is still dominated by AMD FX based CPUs. So uh, is FX still worth it? I don't know, let's find out. Sick and tired of all the RGB craze? Well, don't worry because the EVGA Z270 Classified K is full of all the things that matter, like Intel Optane Memory Ready, U.2 NVMe SSD support, 11-phase PWM for stable overclocking, and a sleek monochromatic design that is perfect for any build. Learn more by visiting EVGA.com. If you've been following the channel for a while, this system might look familiar. It's actually the system I built my dad a couple of years back. It's featuring an FX8320. Now, admittedly, you can get better CPUs today, but this is an FX8320. You can get the 8350 or even 8370, which are incremental slight improvements over this one here, both in terms of efficiency and uh, performance, and they're all about the same price. Right now on Amazon at the time of making this video, it's $129 for an 8350. This one's like 124. And uh, prices actually come up a little bit because when I first started looking at these, when I did my ultra budget gaming stuff last year, I could actually get an 8320 for about 90 bucks. So they came up a little bit here. But anyway, we've got 16 gigabytes of ballistics DDR3 uh, running, I believe 1866. We've got a Hyper 212 Evo on there. The motherboard is an ASRock 970 Fatality. We've got a V650 from Cooler Master in here for a power. And then we are running uh, my Ignite SSD and we've got a one terabyte Toshiba mass storage in there. Nothing too crazy, but graphics card wise, I actually put my 1070 Founders Edition card in there, and that's where I found myself being a little bit conflicted. I was like, hmm, what graphics card would we put in there? Because I put a slower GPU in there, like something like a 950 or a 960, then it's really going to have a lot less impact on overall performance because the CPU will probably have no problems keeping up with that. But what if you have an FX-based system like this, and you want to bump up your graphics card to give yourself a better gaming experience? Well, are you doing yourself a disservice? And is FX still worth it? That's the whole reason why we're here today. Now I do have this overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, so I wanna go ahead and put that out there. I'm trying to improve the IPC a little bit or instructions per clock because that's honestly where FX is going to be lacking. Uh, but let's do this. Let's go ahead and start off with some Cinebench here because I've got my Ryzen scores on here from when I first did the Ryzen testing and we can see how it compares. So I've got a 1691 in the 1800X and then all the way up to an 1805 with the overclocks. I squeezed my knees together on that one so I didn't pee. I feel like I had to pee, but you know, if you squeeze out a fart when you have to pee, that happens. Okay, at 4.5 gigahertz, our 8320 is giving us a 712 score. Hey, it's actually better than like a 4690K, although the IPCs are way better on the 4690K. I digress, there you go. We're getting roughly, what, less than half <laughs> of what an 1800X is. But then again, we're talking a $500 CPU versus a $130 CPU. So here's what I did. I just overclocked our GTX 1070 plus 75 on the core. Max voltage, max power limit, max temp uh, allowance, plus 400 on the memory, because I want to really kind of, I want to push this FX CPU. That's the whole point of this here. I've also got fraps up so we can keep an eye on what's happening in the corner. And uh, so here we are. We're gonna start off here with GTA 5. And all of our settings look like they defaulted to very high. We're hoping to stay above 60. I mean, right, that's kind of what we want to see. So you can see we dropped down to the 50s right there. It could be worse. This guy owes me money. That's what happens when you owe me money and you don't pay. Oh, this guy owes me money too. Come here. Don't make me get a car right. Oh, that was bad for your health. All right, so if we hop in a car here, as we, what is the FPS like as we're moving quickly? So we'd quickly drop down into the 40s right here. You know, for 40s though, it's actually not that bad. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Nick? I don't think it's that bad. It's a smooth 40, if that makes sense. Right, it's not jumping all around all over the place. I, I would like a higher FPS than 53 or 48. And if we look at the chart, right, when I do my GTA 5 testing with the 1070 Founders Edition when it first came out, we were certainly getting higher FPS than this. So we are indeed bottlenecking even a 1070 slightly. Now, what if we take those settings though, and we take it off of very high? If we do that, theoretically, we're gonna be putting up more stress on the CPU. I mean, normal sounds like what you'd want, right? Normal? That's why they call it normal. I think it's fair to say that if you're running an FX CPU six years after it was made, you're probably not in the very high range. And initially it doesn't really look that much different. I mean, maybe things are not quite as crisp like over here, right? 
Texture settings are a little lower, but look at what the average FPS did though. Came up about 10. Yeah, so the FPS is still roughly the same. I, okay, maybe it's a little higher, right? It drops down to about 51, 50. So I figured since we're just hammering the CPU right now with games that have huge worlds to render, why don't we go ahead and go move on here to some Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, so it defaulted everything to very high. And I think that's because of the, the GPU that's actually in there. Because it's got a, it sees a 1070, it wants to go very high on everything. But I don't think it's taking the CPU into a, to account at all. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this preset and I'm gonna go back down to high. Okay, so we're sitting right around 55. What if I turn? Oh, you see that? See, so went down to the 30s right there. This is just, and the whole system just shut off. <laughs> uh, so, what, how much irony would there be if this is the second FX system I killed? Oh my god. Uh, I don't smell any magic smoke. That was a little loud pop. That was me turning the switch back on. Oh. Okay. What do you think? Should we keep going? If this breaks, I owe my sister a new computer. This is my sister's computer now. <laughs> Before I gave it to her, I had to clean it off. And I'm like, ah, I might as well do this video. It also could have been overheating. Because my laptop did that a lot. When it overheats, it shut off yeah. like that. It also could be overheating. So here's the thing though. Like usually if a system overheats like that, it'll just turn right back on when you push the power. Most motherboards today are good enough to know like if you pull too much current, and it shut off for that reason, like it'll warn you when it pops back up and it's doing its post, like, hey, an overcurrent situation was detected. They'll usually tell you that. Um, but anyway, right here in heaven though, you can see we're getting some pretty good frames, right? We got a 107, 106 going here. This is 8X MSAA right now. CPU is currently at 51C on the idle or on the package. Just what would the irony be if I killed two FX systems in the attempt of showing that they're still worth it? J2 cents, AMD killer. First of his kind. Last of his name. Fingers crossed. I mean, I already cut myself before we even started this video. It should have told me how things were gonna go. Maybe it was enough of a sacrifice. More blood was needed. Yeah. I'm okay if, if something goes bad with this PSU and like pops the 1070. I'm not okay with it popping a 1080 Ti. Even though it's just a founder's card, it's still a 1080 Ti. Isn't it pretty? It's pretty. The internet's gonna be so triggered right now. He said it's only a founder's edition. Okay, what are the temps right now while it's loading the game? <laughs> 55C, okay. But I don't know if you guys can see the FPS in the corner though. It's it's fluctuating all over the place. It's anywhere between 50s and 60s. Yeah, see it's it's hovering at about 59C right here so far, which is well within reason. Think I can snipe someone from here? I don't think you can snipe ever. I'm pretty bad. Oh, what was that? I think I hit him in the knee, but still it counts. Okay, let's see if I can do this again. Here's one. Oh, what's that? Two for two. I think it's because you have a camera on you. Someone learned this knife. Ah, oh, where'd it go? Like over both buildings? Probably. Would you have killed them? Yeah. Oh, it did it again. Maybe it just doesn't like my sniping skills. Cause see, it won't turn back on. What we have experienced right here is some sort of a power situation. Situation. So if I turn off the power supply right now and I try and turn it on, right? I gotta. Drain those caps. If we turn it back on. See? Mm. Mm. All right, so I just did a little checking online to make sure I wasn't crazy, and it looks like the FX 8320 will start to thermal throttle at 70C. Now we're not hitting 70C and we're shutting down. So I'm starting to think that this might just be something to do with the PSU or Something, I don't believe there's any sort of short in this system. I mean, I built it, so that actually doesn't mean much. We're gonna do some Doom right now, because here's the thing. We just tested two games that clearly bring the FX to its knees, and one of them is making the damn thing turn off. But uh, what about something like Doom with the Vulcan API, which is very good with lower end hardware. That's what it's all designed for, especially DX12. OpenGL is all right, but Vulcan is kind of like, next level shit when it comes to being able to run it on lower end hardware. So what is it like? Okay, GTX 1070 in Doom, ultra settings, 1080p. Look at that FPS up in the corner. Like if you, if this is the only game you wanted to play, yeah, I think you're fine. <laughs> what do you think? I wonder if it's gonna shut off on me here. Get to an area where they spawn. I can see if it'll shut off. 
Because right now you're kind of just wandering. You're wandering. There we go. So we've decided that it's time for us to test out the power supply. So that's what we're doing right now. Maybe my theory about this being a power supply issue isn't confirmed. And if it is, guess what? I'm gonna get a new power supply from Cooler Master because that one that I've got has like a five year warranty on it. Five years on that, and we bought that. We bought that. As you can see, only the finest of cable management here at Jay's Two Cents. Also too, having it wired this way too would rule out any, the possibility of any sort of short in the system. I still don't think we're anywhere near the temperature limits, quite honestly. We were keeping an eye on the package. We were watching our package very carefully. Can you hear me in there? Yeah. FPS is roughly the same as it always was. I get to go back and try sniping again. FPS though, still in the 50s. 63, we're moving. This isn't bad, although motion blur is on. Let's get that crap off. Could you play with this though? Like what you're seeing so far with turning and stuff? Yeah. Whoa, that went way too high, huh? Damn it! I hate when you're right. You know what? I'm much better at something else here. Are you ready? Oh, grenade launcher? Really? I really can't snipe, can I? Nope. So bad at this. That scared me. I thought someone was honking in the game. I was like, I didn't know they could honk at you. I mean, it drops down to about 51, but only for a moment. Like the minimums seem to be pre pretty decent. Look at that FPS right there. And you want me to go to where there's bad guys? Well, that's where we are right now. Turn up the darkness so we can hear the games. Now this is Battlefield 3, so I expect it to obviously do a very good job because this is what, this was current game at the time. Oh yeah, look at that FPS in the corner. We're doing all right, well over 100. Oh my God. So I'm not used to this mouse. That's my excuse. That was weird the way it turned black. Oh, I got revived. They don't do that in Battlefield 4. I don't know why it's doing that though. Like every time I die, it turns black. Dude, it just got revived again. Yeah, the FPS here is doing fantastic. I'm trying to pull out the noob, the noob rifle. Pro pipe. Pro pipe, am I gonna get revived? Yep, here he comes. Yay! What? What's this trade? All right, so obviously you can play games on FX. You can play games on a potato if you're willing to play at only a couple of FPS. Um, FX is definitely showing its age though, so it's a hard sell for me to say, yeah, go out and buy an FX system if you absolutely want to get into gaming, because I feel like at the very minimum, you would want to run one of the eight core CPUs, like an 8320, 8350, 8370, or whatever, and uh, there's nowhere to go. There's no upgrade path, it's still DDR3, and the IPC on it is terrible. Instructions per clock are terrible, which is why Ryzen was such a huge improvement. Now, if you absolutely have to go out and buy something today to play games you can't wait any longer, you can't wait for the potential of Ryzen 3 coming out at the same price point that these currently are sitting at and are going to destroy these in terms of performance, then I guess it's definitely still worth it. If you already have the system, stick with it a little bit longer. You can live on this a little bit longer until Ryzen 3 comes out and maybe pricing will improve all across the board as competition is definitely heating up in the space between Intel and AMD. But there's that guys, the weirdness that you saw, blame it on the power supply and the fact that we're on a clone drive from Intel system. So I would expect some weirdness to happen. But uh, yeah, FPS is decent, especially in some of the older games. And it seemed to handle the 1070 okay. Of course it was bottlenecked a little bit, but what'd you expect? What'd you expect with a six year old CPU? Anyway guys, time to go. Thanks for watching. Hope this video has answered some of your questions. I'm asked this all the time about FX and if it's still worth it. Here's my response. See you in the next one.